Now, I want to kind of get your thoughts on who's some other GMs that you feel good about. You know, give me your top five general managers, okay? I'm just going to get mine briefly right here. Number one is Bill Belichick. I think that's enough said based on what he's done the last, you know, two decades with the Patriots, continuing to recycle players and get the most bang for his buck. I mean, the fact that he got Cam Newton for $1 million per year virtually, that's one of the biggest steals I've ever seen. Bill Belichick and the Patriots organization continue to steal away good players and get the best bang for their buck. I think Brett Veach, he's, he's a guy that's in my top five. I'm not going in order. I'm just going to kind of tell you the f top five guys in no particular order. Um, so I'm going to go with Veach. I already talked about Howie Roseman and how he was able to build the Philadelphia Eagles to winning a Super Bowl. You know, he, he built a great roster. I think that his, his success speaks for itself. I'm going to go Kevin Colbert, Colbert next, okay? Kevin Colbert has done a great job of surrounding Big Ben Roethlisberger with a lot of talent at wide receiver, you know, tight end, offensive line. He was able to fix the defense by acquiring Megan Fitzpatrick in a deal that a lot of people actually criticized, but that turned out to be very good. He got Devin Bush. He's fixed the defense. He's built a very good team. In the last 10 seasons, the Steelers have not had a losing season. That's pretty impressive. So I got to go with him in my top five. And then last but not least, I'm going to go with John Snyder. Now, is his method always perfect? No. It, does he, you know, kind of present a team that relies on Russell Wilson too much? Yeah, probably. But guess what? Oh, he drafted Russell Wilson. He found that guy. He was he he was able to, you know, find Russell Wilson and say, hey, let's take a chance on this, you know, barely five foot eleven quarterback that was coming out of Wisconsin who had some questions. And his ability to find players in the late rounds, that's what impresses me the most, you know, finding Bobby Wagner. Finding Richard Sherman, managing the cap, and and building a very good team that Seattle, you know, rode to two straight Super Bowls. Obviously, they did not become a dynasty. Sorry, Pete Carroll not running the, the ball on that one yard line still really stings me to this day, just as a football fan. But I'm kind of happy because I'm a Packers fan and they beat us in the NFC Championship game. But yeah, man, those are my five guys. I got to go with Belichick, Veach, Roseman, Colbert, Snyder, in no particular order. Who are your five guys? All right, so I definitely like your list. I mean, you cannot go wrong. Any of the guys that we both named, you cannot go wrong with any of them. They've all proven themselves, all great guys. Um, so I my list is actually a little different from yours, uh, which is pretty good for the sake of the video, I believe. Um, obviously, I talked about Brett Beach. I'd probably put him at one, uh, but, I mean, Bill Belichick, hands down. There's no denying the greatness of the Patriots organization. I mean, they have been a dynasty for over 15 years. I mean, the NFL is literally built to prevent teams from doing what the Patriots did. I mean, the cap room, the reverse snake draft, uh, when the best team gets the worst pick, it prevents teams from being good for more than a decade. But the Patriots did it, and Belichick's just his, he has a knack for finding talent, especially talent that can fit his system. I mean, you can, he brings in Edelman. I mean, you can go on and on about all the amazing guys Belichick has brought in. Edel, Edelman was a quarterback. You know, he, they converted him exactly. to a wide receiver. Exactly. I mean, he brings in guys that you never thought would be good, and he just turns them into stars. And he's just... Yeah, this is a little bit of a different point, but I think both Brady and Belichick are great. I don't think one is better than the other. I think they just worked so good together for 15 years that, I mean, it won them a bunch of rings, more rings than anyone else has. So I'll move off of Belichick for a little bit just because you also talked about him. Uh, my next three guys are actually three guys that you did not have on the list, um, but just guys that I, I like the job they've done. Okay. So, in no particular order, I'm going to start with John Lynch of the 49ers. Uh, he's only been there three years, okay? So, I, a lot of the guys you talked uh, talked about had been there. They had established themselves, you know. Kevin Colbert's been there for a lot of years, you know. Howie Rosen's been there. Um, John Lynch has only been here three years, I believe. Uh, but, I mean, it's you look what he did with the 49ers. I mean, he got him to a Super Bowl, and let's be real, they should have won that game. Like you said, the, the Chiefs' offense was nowhere to be found. The uh, 49ers' defense was dominating that game. But one play was the cause of it. And then Jimmy G failed to hit Emmanuel Sanders on the game-winning drive. And the rest is history. But you look at Lynch. Um, 
He's drafted extremely well. I mean, this is one of the best talent evaluators at the GM position. I mean, Nick Bosa, obviously. I mean, he's he went like four years in a row with E. Lyman in the first round. That's unheard of, but it worked out amazing for him. Um, a guy I like to look at is Dre Greenlaw. I mean, Dre Greenlaw was a fifth-round pick. No one knows who he is until this year. And he plays out of his mind. I mean, he was a beast at the middle linebacker position for them. Definitely one of the better middle linebackers in the game this past year. Um, and he just built a great scheme. I'm not saying I agree with the ground and pound scheme in today's game. But, I mean, it really should have worked for him to carry him to a Super Bowl. A bunch of running backs. You build a great O-line. You get a great play caller as your head coach, and you just roll with it. I mean, I think he's done a really good job drafting, and I just admire what he's done. Uh, moving on, I have Eric DeCostra for the Ravens. So I love what DeCostra has done. Probably, if not the best roster, easily a top three roster in the whole NFL. And it is crazy to me that, you know, we have three years ago, go back three years ago, Joe Flacco is old as dirt, and he's on the decline. And I think everyone in the NFL world was expecting the Ravens to head into, you know, a pretty decent-sized rebuild. And everyone on that team was retiring, you know, Ray Lewis. And Ray Lewis has been out of the game for a while, but other guys on the Ravens' defense, the Ravens have been known for that defense. And... A lot of guys are retiring, getting old. So everyone's thinking, okay, well, they're going to go into a rebuild. Not so fast. They did not tank whatsoever. They draft Lamar. You, you take a flyer on Lamar, um, the Heisman winning quarterback, and wow, did that work out. I mean, I, I liked Lamar. I thought he was going to be a good quarterback. But if you say you saw this coming from Lamar Jackson, you're flat out lying. But one of the biggest reasons Lamar is so good is because DeCastra built the scheme the perfect way for Lamar. Would Lamar Jackson thrive in Kansas City's offensive scheme? Eh, probably not. But he fits his scheme perfectly with the QB run, the QB options, and then they can let Lamar fling it. Because he, he is a good passer, but he is an extremely good runner. Um... And it, it's crazy. I know you will agree with me on this point. They picked about 28 this year. I'm pretty sure the Ravens have the 28th pick. That is correct. That is correct. Getting Patrick Queen, that was a steal. 28th pick this year. And they might have had the best draft in the entire NFL. Like, are you kidding me? You're picking bottom four, and <laughs> you get Patrick Queen, J.K. Dobbins, uh, ben Bredesen from Michigan. Oh, uh, there, there was other guys too. I forget. Malik Harrison. They, had, they got a very talented defensive tackle from Texas A and M. Devin Duvernier, yes. et cetera, et cetera. Yes, exactly. Just like you said. I mean, that is a bunch of guys. Like, I mean, like I said earlier, everyone thought the Ravens three years ago were probably going to tank, and now they're competing for the AFC. And I mean, they could very well win the Super Bowl this year. I mean, they got an absolute squad. DeCastro has brought in some amazing pieces. Um, just the whole line is really good. A lot of great things about the Ravens. And then my final guy, my fifth guy, I'm going to go with Mickey Lunas from the Saints. Um, you know, the Saints have had some playoff misfortune. And, they get a lot of criticism because they're they're a regular season team, and then you get to the playoffs, and they always seem to come up short. Well, that doesn't take away from the fact that they have one of the best rosters in the league still, and a lot of it is Lunas. I mean, all of it is because of Lunas. The Saints were a team, like, mm, four years ago, I'd say, where it was Drew Brees or nothing. That defense was pitiful. They had no one on the defense. The defense was a joke. Well, Lunas comes out, drafts Marshawn Lattimore at 10, which was a steal. And I think that really skyrocketed that defense. You know, you got Lattimore. You got uh, Cam Jordan. 
Uh, who, who was the DN they drafted uh, last year? Was it they Davenport? Got, Davenport? Yep, Marcus Davenport. They got him. I think he's going to be really good. I hope he'll be good. But the Saints just have a really good team. I mean, Michael Thomas in the second round. Are you kidding me? That's amazing. Top three receiver in the league in the second round. Like, unbelievable. Uh, and I think the O-line is really good, too. I mean, you got away with robbery trading Jimmy Graham for uh, the center. That was a great trade for them. And uh, their offensive line is going to be really good this year. I mean, they picked – okay, listen to this. Ryan Ramchek was uh, – he was either the last or the second-to-last pick in the first round when he was taken. Yep, and late round pick. Let, let, first round pick, that was a late pick, yeah. And, you know, those guys, they, they kind of took – they took a flyer on Ramchek. They traded back up into the draft, I believe, for him, actually. And he's one of the best tackles in the game now. They have him, Teron Armstead, so – you need two great, or you need two good tackles. They have two great tackles. They have good guards. They went out and got Caesar Ruiz from Michigan, who was the best center in the draft. And I just really like the team Nikki Lunas has built. I think, I think the Saints are probably the favorite in the NFC this year, with, along with you know some other teams. But it's it's fair to say that they might very well be the favorite. Um. So yep, those are my five guys. Uh. Obviously, you can't go wrong with really any of the top 10 GMs in the league, I'd say. But uh, those are some of the guys I really like. Gotcha, gotcha. So in no particular order, I have uh, Veach, Belichick, Roseman, um, Kevin Colbert, the Steelers GM, John Snyder. So I got the Patriots GM, uh, Belichick, Chiefs GM, uh, Eagles GM, um, Steelers GM, and Seahawks GM. And you have, say it again, in, in top five in no order. So I have Veach, who is from the Chiefs, uh, Belichick from the Patriots, John Lynch from the 49ers, uh, Eric DeCostra from the Ravens, and uh, Mickey Lunas from the Saints. Got it, got it. Thank you so much for watching this video today. Please also note that the Juice Lurt Sports Podcast is not just a YouTube channel. It is available on all podcasting platforms, including Spotify, Google Podcasts, iTunes, and Apple Podcasts. Also, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share this content with all your friends. This podcast is my favorite thing in the entire world right now. It is my passion. I want more people to listen to this podcast. I really want this podcast to grow. Also, a fun fact about me is that I want to go into the sports broadcasting and media world once I graduate from the University of Toledo, a college in Northern Ohio. I am looking to become one of the next great sports broadcasters and analysts out in the world. And I potentially would like to start my own network if this podcast really truly grows. Or if I fall short of that goal, I would love to work for a big time network like ESPN or Fox Sports 1. I am open to all networks. So if you believe in my dreams and you see or hear my passion through the screen, be sure to tell all your friends about the Juice Lurt Sports Podcast. Stay motivated, you guys. Have a God-blessed day, and I'm out.